If you think about a personal knowledge management system as a grand structure such as a castle or a cathedral, then permanent or evergreen notes would be the bricks with which those structures are built. But what are the characteristics of these notes? Hi, I'm Jeffrey and welcome to part four of my Building a Digital Mind series. In this video, I'm gonna cover the seven aspects that I think go into making a note worthy of building your second brain with. Evergreen notes are atomic. Like in physics where it's used to describe an irreducible component of a larger system, if we think about our personal knowledge management system, what is it really stewarding? It's ideas. So if it's gonna be irreducible, that means that a evergreen note needs to have one idea per note. And by making sure that they are atomic, it enables a couple things within the system. It enables us to link them more easily to other notes because they're not about a wide range of topics. It's gonna to be simpler to connect them to other ones without it being muddied by all the possible things that a single note could be about. Also, keeping it about a single idea will limit the size of the notes. Rather than having pages and pages of text Per note, you can keep it nice and tight so that you can skim through it easily as you're roaming around in your personal knowledge management system. So if our evergreen notes are atomic, then we should be able to capture the essence of the note with a good title that is descriptive of what the note is actually going to contain. And what I've read about is that you should name the title the way that you would an essay with bold declarations or questions. You don't want it to be uncertain what is gonna be within the note when you're going through your system. So I had the thought of using questions as titles as being perhaps an excellent way to distinguish between notes that are developing versus those that have matured. If you can't make a clear title, then you might not have thought or have enough information about the topic yet to make a great note. So if you can frame it in terms of a question for further inquiry, and as you get more information and understanding, you can then update the title to a statement down the road. And initially in my system, I was having some resistance to using longer titles. I wanted to keep them short and punchy, but in doing so, that makes it really hard to make them descriptive, they end up kind of being these buckets for all of these different thoughts and ideas to go into, which was making it hard to make a clear, concise note about one idea. So the way you title your note can actually help you determine what you need to put within that note. So once you've figured out what the single idea the note is gonna be about and you've gotten a great descriptive title for the note, you need to make sure that the note is autonomous. There should be enough context and information within the note itself so that it can stand on its own, that it can, so that it can be understood down the road without needing to remember the context in which you wrote it. And one of the benefits if you're using your PKM system to produce content is that if you write your notes to be autonomous, you can more easily repackage them into a publishable work because you have enough of the context built up that you can just port them directly into a written piece without having to do much more research or searching for additional information to include. Now the next idea that evergreen notes are editable is the reason why I'm going with the term evergreen instead of permanent to help with the mindset of not viewing them as static entities they can grow and change over time and they never truly reach a completed stage. As I'm learning new things or going through and reviewing the notes in my knowledge management system, I can update them as I review them under new and different contexts. So evergreen in this context means that they're always working and they never stop growing. So in the beginning, when you're writing notes, you don't have to worry about making them perfect because they are going to be able to change over time. The notes that you use the most are gonna get developed the most. 
So evergreen notes are personal notes. The first and most critical word in personal knowledge management is personal. And I think personal means a couple different things which I've outlined in this note. I think the first being that personal means understanding. You have enough knowledge of the material that you're able to write a note about it and not just write about it, but write about it in your own words. Very key to making these notes. It also means that it is relevant to you and your life or you have some interest in the subject that you're creating the note about. If it doesn't fit meaningfully within the context of your life, then it is just information and it's not adding any knowledge for you. I also think that personal means valuable, that it should be able to add some sort of value either directly or indirectly to you or the people in your life. And this doesn't just always have to be work related or output related. It could simply be just adding enjoyment about a subject that you are interested in and like learning things about. So I think it's important when we're building our second brain that if a note doesn't meet the criteria of being personal, that we filter it out because otherwise we might as well just put our name around the internet and call it our personal knowledge management system. But I think that defeats the point of calling it personal. So if our notes are going to represent how our brain works in any way, then they need to be extensively linked to the notes around them, just like the neurons in our brains. And I think that this encourages a few things within our system. Number one, thinking broadly about the ideas and the thoughts that we have and connecting them to other contexts rather than just the one that we initially wrote about. It also helps improve the discoverability of the note because the number of connections means that we are much more likely to stumble across that note in the future. If it's just off by itself and orphaned, then it's gonna have a hard time resurfacing as we are playing around within our system. And then it also opens up multiple avenues of exploration. As we're roaming through our system, we don't just have the same track to follow over and over again. As we have multiple options for further inquiry presented to us, we can create notes that link in new and interesting ways and develop new insights. Like the section where I talked about note titles being descriptive and potentially using questions strategically. This is one that I haven't quite figured out for myself, whether I should write evergreen notes for myself or with an audience in mind. I think there could be a benefit to writing it for yourself where you don't have to have that much friction up front to writing notes because you don't have to worry about developing it to the point where it could be shared. Kind of like where I talked about notes being editable, this is another way to further reduce that friction in the beginning to just getting notes within your system. But also if I think about in terms of creating content, if I start out with an audience in mind, then that can facilitate making them more autonomous from the beginning, so having enough context that they can stand on their own, as well as potentially lessen the workload when it comes to incorporating them into a publishable piece of content. So I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to consistently apply this mindset going forward, perhaps a hybrid approach for things that I intend to share, I might write for an audience, or things that I know that I won't, I'll just write them for myself. Let me know down in the comments below what your tactic is for writing notes. What is the audience that you have in mind? I'd love to hear about it. So thanks everyone for watching this video in my Building a Digital Mind series. If you have any ideas or comments or thoughts for where I can continue to take this series, what would you like me to cover? You can put them down in the description below. In the next couple of videos, I'm planning on going over how to link notes within my personal knowledge management system, as well as how do I develop the information that I consume into knowledge to create notes in the first place. So stay tuned for those topics that'll be coming soon. 
I'll see you all next time. Of viewing them not as this static entity, 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 there you go.